Warning, this film contains interviews referring to incidents of sexual assault, harassment, and stalking. Please be advised, as this content may be triggering to some viewers. Monsters in the Alleyway, a film by Mac Collins. If someone says that they've been raped, they've probably been raped. When you hear rape, you don't think of the person that you know, like, assaulting you. You think of poor girl in a back alley. I'll start with the Brock Turner case because I think that's one that really shocked and uh, upset a lot of people, rightfully so. Not only because of the nature of what happened and how ugly and awful the assault was and how public that it was, but also the way in which it was handled. And he's a monster. In my mind, he's a monster. My assaulter was someone that I definitely knew beforehand. Uh, me and all my friends knew them beforehand. It's really hard for people to just realize that this happens, and not only does this happen, but the way that it happens um, really seriously damages people. And I think that's part of the thing too, is you have to change the culture of it, it happens to a lot more people than you think it does, and it happens in a lot more ways than you think it does. Like, men get sexually assaulted all the time. It changed me in that it brought down what I already thought of myself, which was horrible in the first place, and just reduced me to nothing, like, less than nothing. Like, I was a vagina for a night, and I'm not even a girl. We can't say, well, we don't think that anything happened, so we'll probably just ignore that. Or, that was that person's first strike, so we don't really need to look into that. I, I'm still not happy with what I got, but it's over, and I lived, so. There are federal and state laws that guide how institutions are told to respond to any kind of allegation of sexual misconduct. And I think most people know that the primary um, law that is uh, followed by colleges and universities is Title IX. They did issue a no contact warrant for a month, only a month, and nothing else happened to that person. He had to go to a little talk with someone about knowing what consent is and basically got a little slap on the wrists and sent on his way. Other than that, I didn't receive any support. I also never sought out any support because again, I didn't feel like it was bad enough. And I feel like, especially since I'm a dude, I'm not only a dude, I'm a trans dude. So either it wasn't rape because I'm a dude or people see me as a woman. Students are critical, and they're critical to the changing of the culture and to making, you know, CCD a place where people can feel safe. Tell me about the stalking issue at CCAD. Right now, CCAD has a really good upstanding reputation, which I think is pretty well earned. But there are a lot of things getting swept under the rug. Doesn't mean we have to be quiet. We have to take it when people say, oh, don't worry, they're, they're not a threat. Oh, don't worry, we've taken care of it. Because I don't trust that. CCAD, like many college campuses, has trouble with sexual harassment 
and behaviors that fall under that category, including um, stalking, which for clarity in this case refers to harass or persecute somebody with unwanted and obsessive attention. In terms of this, I know that's what our campus has the biggest problem with because it's really, it's hard to pinpoint. <laughs> it's one of those things where you can brush it aside and a lot of students do. The problem is, is that it tends to be a very few number of students doing a lot of the stalking. But when you've been proven guilty, what, what needs to happen for change? How far does a stalker have to go for the school to say that's enough? Because right now, it seems like there is no end. I think the school should also notify teachers about this. I know they don't. I know there's some laws around that. But I think it is unacceptable. That teachers have no idea what's happening in their classrooms until it is already happening. There's no justifying that, in my opinion. And the school has no policies in place. There's nothing the school does to notify the teachers, notify the students, or punish the student for their stalking behavior, as far as I'm aware. The disciplinary actions do not remove them from campus or their classes. So to me, that is allowing someone with predatory behavior. Pathological predatory behavior, because this is repeat offenses. Even after the students received help for their stalking behavior, after they've been told and to exist in the campus environment, even after all that, they're still perpetrating this against other students. And nothing is being done to remove them from this environment, and clearly they're not adapting. So pretty much you have a predator in a campus environment where everyone else is prey. And that's not fair to the majority of the student population. I think it would be good for the school to enact policy that would enable the school to remove repeat offenders from campus and enrollment. I know money is a concern. I know lawsuits are a concern. But I think student safety is more important than that. The school is taking a stance and maybe enacting policy that says, you know, upon receiving the third no contact order, you would be removed from the school. I think there should be policy in place to ensure that the school can remove you because I'm fairly certain that at this point in time, there's not any such policy in place. It's all pretty up in the air. And I think that's what's allowed a lot of things to get to where they are, is because we don't have rules down. It's a case by case. And I think we need some, like, some solid. This is where the line is. If the school won't do anything, the students will.